SIWAVE is a power integrity and signal integrity tool. ZNOT scan is one of the most important tools in SIWAVE. ZNOT scan is a necessary tool that scan large PCB boards with hundreds and thousands of lines. Extract the impedance of these lines and quickly identify any violation. The setup of the ZNOT scan tool is, is, is so simple. So SIWAVE should not be used to build PCBs. While this is possible, it's not the best way to utilize SIWAVE. SIWAVE can import so many kinds of files. So you have here, for example, a list of them, EDB, IPC258, ODB++, and DXF, and even GDSII. When SIWAVE upload the file, it extracts lots of information from the CAD file. For example, the stack up. If you look at here, we can look at the stack up. Uh, you can look at the material, the thickness, the components, and all the nets that exist inside uh, the PCB. So our focus today is on ZNOT scan. So I'm gonna go to simulation, and this is our icon. If you click on it, that's what you're gonna get is the ZNOT scan. Any process in SI wave, DC, PI, signal integrity, or radiation, starts by selecting a solver. Once a solver has been selected, SI wave generates a dialog box that looks like uh, almost like a form. The user needs to check the form and fill up the missing information. So here, for example, SI wave populates the dialog box with all the existing structures in the model. I can select some of the lines or I can select all of them to solve all of them. SI wave uses advanced techniques that can solve all the lines very fast. So I choose to solve them all. Notice here that SI wave only selected the traces. Anything classified as a power plane, SI wave does not put it in this table. Now, in the table, I see all the trace categories. So you have the single ended, you have the differential, if you have differential, and also extended. Make sure to check them all and make sure that they are all selected. In the nominal Z naught, which is this column, you will find the number that SI wave expects to calculate. So for single ones, it will put 50. If it's differential, it will put 100, and so on and so on. But you can change that. Suppose you want to change many lines, for example, something like this. Then I select all these lines. Then I come here and I put the number I want and I click update and it will update them all in one shot. That's how easy it is to modify any dialog box from SI wave. In addition to the nominal column, you have also the warning threshold column where you enter a number in percentage beyond which if, if the impedance is different than this by greater than, for example, here 10%, you need to see a warning. You want SI wave to give you a warning. The other column you see here is the violation one. Practically, if it exceeds that percentage, plus or minus, you want SI wave to give you a, a violation message, not a warning message, a violation message. Under that, you have the right to decide that you, you don't want SI wave to do the calculation for any trace that's shorter than this. Now you can use as short as you want, but don't make it zero. Make sure that it doesn't solve all the traces, otherwise it would be difficult for you to identify certain bad sections. So now we are ready to solve, as simple as this. So we go and we launch. We say, is it already scanned? I say, yes, go ahead and scan. Now that we got a solution, now we can display the results. So the first important results is to display the trace impedance. So if you click like this, now you can see all the traces that were calculated. And in color, you can tell what's their impedance. You can also zoom in and look at the impedance of each one of them. Just move the mouse over them and you will be able to see the different values along the traces. You can also select to see one specific layer. For example, I wanna see the VCC layer. There's nothing there. I would like to see the ground, for example, there's nothing there. The base, okay, so we have some traces at the bottom. 
let's see on the surface if we have some traces yes we have some traces now what you can do also you can change the scale you can click here and you can modify the numbers here you can modify number of divisions decimals used you can go to log scale you can define the max and the min if you want to zoom in on specific values suppose you would like to know which trace you are looking at for example you are looking at this trace and and you see the impedance is 59.7733 so which trace is this one so the way to do it is you activate all the traces now you get them back if you click on the trace now in the property window you will get the name of the net the name of the net and all the information you want about the net now checking the traces of each line is very time consuming it's not practical especially when you have thousands and thousands of lines what you're looking for are traces which have violation they are not exactly what you expect them to be and the way to do it is to come here and select display warning and violations so you're going to get another a plot where you can see that anything that is in green it means it is within the threshold it's 50 ohm plus or minus 5 10 percent sorry uh, the warning anything that exceeds the warning the 10 percent then it's this orange color and anything that exceeds 20 percent it's a red so the beauty of this is that you can zoom in very fast on the sections that are really really bad then you can fix them you can also have this information in a table so you go here and you say display warning and violation table so you get some sort of a table like this you can show them all you can show them all you can only show you can also show only violations you can uh, show only warnings you can edit your entries here which is which is the limitations of the impedance the threshold and the violation so if i click here i can go back and change these numbers the warning and the threshold percentages okay. you can also generate a report so you can view scan report so you get a report like this all the necessary information in details if you want to modify a trace suppose you're not happy with the impedance of a trace you can simply zoom in on this trace click on it and within the properties you have the center line if you click on it as you can see you have all the coordinates you have also the width you can modify the width of each section so you have to identify which section has a problem and you can modify it. In addition to changing the width, you can also change the, the trace itself, the center line of the trace, so you can modify the layout itself, the routing. If you would like to modify more than one line, you can select them all and you can come here and modify the width of all of them in one shot. For example, I can change this into 23. 0, 0, 0. and as you can see change them all so these are all the different things that you can do with the z not scan the characteristic impedance scanner you can check the impedance you can zoom in on the bad sections you can modify them and also you can save it to a report and you can export the report now in addition to that SI Wave allows you to see the profile. The profile allows you to see uh, how much time was spent, how much memory has been used. This is important information if you are comparing old uh, results, old solutions with the new one. You just want to make sure that you are using the same or the right number of uh, meshes in all the different sections. In addition to the profile, you can also look at the simulation properties. And simply it's gonna remind you with the setup that were used in, or, in order to solve this problem. So in, in this case, we used the, the balanced. Now when you when you run Z, Z not scan, 
you can specify the accuracy using this option, which is other solver options. You can order instead of being balanced, you can ask for optimum accuracy if you don't have massive big PCB. So this summarizes everything we wanted to say about the Z0 scan. Thank you.